our brains uh, can't contain all of the rules and all of the vocab and like think, oh, if I swap these two rules, uh, what happens, etc. So we want computers to do that, uh, to assist us. And there's a very nice article by Patrick Sings Williams uh, that kind of uh, documents all of the attempts that have been made from people like just doing uh, control F, uh, control R to like search and replace and this type of things. Um, and the basic idea is phonological change is the same as a rewrite rule uh, on a string. So what if we took uh, our IPA, wrote it, like digitized uh, all the material we have, have IPA, and then have a list of rewrite rules. And so our work today is we look at this thing that's called finite state transducers, which is, in my opinion, a very complex name for a very simple thing. Um, right, so finite state transducers, uh, more or less, it's like you start from a point, uh, which is uh, here, these circles that, that say zero, and as you go through your uh, string of IPA uh, symbols, you decide either you keep them as such and emit them, or you replace them by something else. So if I had a rule that said uh, H disappears in all contexts, then I get this. Uh, I don't have a point. Oh, okay. No. Okay. So just uh, follow the tenet of my arm. Um, a circle that says uh, the at symbol says, "Oh, that is very tiny." Uh, so it says, "Let's come back to that." But it says every time you see an age, just output zero. So output nothing, and then continue. Go through the string like this, and every time you see an age, just remove it. Right. Uh, simple. And the library we use is called Forma. Uh, that's more or less the syntax uh, of FST libraries is always the same. Uh, and very similar example, if I say N uh, is always changed to N, uh, then I have this circle that says, all right, go through uh, my string, and every time you see an N replaced by N, when you see N, just go with N, and when you see anything else, just output anything else, right? Um, so far, nothing really uh, impressive, I hope. Um, now, if we look at rules that say something like, oh, age disappears in any time there's something before. Uh, so any time that is not starting position, then we would have this uh, thing where we say, all right, start uh, your word, consume the first letter, and output it. There's nothing that can happen here. We always take the first uh, letter, uh, IPA symbol, sorry. And once we've consumed at least one item, then we are back to the previous rule that we had on the previous slide, uh, which is to say, all right, if you, if you see an H, delete it, anything else consumed, right? Does it make uh, rough sense so far? Um, okay, and then we get into rules that are a bit, uh, all right, so this is the kind of uh, standard uh, linguistic notation, and this is the format specific notation, and I hope you see that uh, they're fairly close. So you can translate them uh, fairly easily, and uh, I've done, uh, I've written a bit of uh, software to do that. So now we have a rule that says, all right, when you have uh, uh, deleted, if it's between a uh, uh, and a okay. cut. All right, so now uh, we are the beginning of a word, and we say, if it's really anything except of word, just consume it, go with it, and do nothing about it. If it's a hu, go to the state one. So, okay, we're happy with the hu. And there are several things that can happen. Either we get a e, in which case we delete it, and we go to the third one, that's kind of the point of our rule, e with the condition that we would get a k after, right? And if it's anything else, so if, for instance, we get a e, but we don't get a k after, so here there's no k, we just start with the e and then whatever sound comes after. So this very simple rule like translates to like this fairly complex di diagram. Um, and you know, we can come back to it after and you tell me, you know, hey, I don't understand why it's doing this. Um, and you know, if you had the uh, and another uh, 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 infinitely, then you would just loop on this stage, or if you had anything that is not the e, then you go back to zero until finally you would find another uh, and E and K. All right. Um, so we see that we already get fairly complex uh, 
output for like rules that are uh, trivial for uh, a linguist, but that is the case. Uh, there is support for uh, feature classes. So if you want to say no, this appears uh, after something that is uh, plus syllabic, plus long, and before an S, uh, you can write it fairly pretty much the same way as it is uh, written, as long as you define like what it means to be uh, plus syllable. Really? <laughs> plus syllable and uh, plus uh, plus long. Oh, sorry, I wrote syl plus, but I put a long plus here. Yeah. So you can define feature classes, uh, and so you can do nice things like this. Um, and right, so now that you've defined rules, uh, there's this concept called like going down and up, which I guess is like you go down in time and uh, up in time. So I took this uh, similar to the hua and, and uh, quick uh, that we had earlier, but uh, a bit easier to pronounce for me. Um, let's imagine we have a rule uh, that says a is, uh, goes to a uh, when it's between p and t. Uh, so if you had a word, uh, so you pass this word through this diagram, it goes from apato to apeto, okay? Nothing uh, really crazy. And the nice thing here is that you can also go up. So if you said, all right, I'm... I have some French words. I would like to reconstruct the possible Latin ancestors. Uh, you'd say, all right, I've seen apeto in French. Uh, I don't know that it's a word, but why not? You'd say, all right, that could be apato or apeto, right? Because, uh, but if you told it, hey, I have the word apato, it would say, all right, that's not a possible string in French based on the rule you've just given me. So it's able to, as it reconstructs up, at some point, it will start cutting some branches. Because uh, here, for instance, we start creating two branches. You say, all right, maybe it's apato, maybe it's apeto. And when you apply all of the rules backwards, uh, you will have a really large amount of uh, candidates. Uh, and it will start cutting branches when it finds uh, rules that can't be applied. Right. So this kind of system can be used for phonology, as we've done. It's usually used for morphology. Uh, but you can think of anything. You can compose them. Uh, so this is the rules. Uh, rule one is like n goes to n uh, before k. Uh, we can analyze this if you want later. And k goes to zero uh, between a n and a t. Well, I guess it would be a, a coronal in general, but let's just go with t. So these are the two rules. Uh, and if you compose them, this makes this massive diagram, which I promise will behave the same way as if you say, first do this and then do that. Right, so it makes these very large uh, graphs. So here I have two rules. Now uh, I talk about it later, but uh, for Latin to French, I have a system of 600 rules. And once I had something like 15 rules, it, the entire screen is covered with, you know, I can't even compute the entire thing. So two rules and it's already a nightmare. But it's a nightmare to look at. Uh, the computer does the thing and it doesn't really care about this. Um, right. So now uh, I, I talked a bit. Oh, yeah. And so these, for instance, would take the word like uh, ping to ram and it would first go like through ping to ram and then ping, ping to ram with the, without the K. Um, these are uh, rules that go from Latin to French. I didn't do the full uh, derivation up to French, but we get the. So with this, what do we have so far? Um, we have this interface uh, called Kaper that's been uh, developed by a previous uh, person on the project, called Xun Gong, um, where you can define, uh, he worked on uh, proto-Burmish, and he defines all of these rules. So you don't have to call them rule one. You can actually call them whatever you want. And then he has like, uh, the modern pronunciation in many Burmish uh, dialects. And then he tries to reconstruct not just one line, but saying, all right, I have all of these dialects. Let's try to reconstruct ancestors. And sometimes you get a nice reconstruction for one, or sometimes you have all of these possible uh, things according to your rules. Um, and with this tool, he published a dictionary, etymological dictionary of uh, Auto Burmish or the Burmish uh, family. So we have this tool. Uh, what else do we have? Um, come working on to coming here, I uh, made a proof of concept. There were some uh, rebuttal from reviewers saying like, 
this works for Burmish, but it can't work for languages that have more complex syllable structures. Uh, and so we did uh, Latin to French, borrowing from uh, uh, Ma and Mortensen, uh, the first half of which is going to present tomorrow and is in this room, uh, where they digitized uh, the entire uh, classic uh, pulp from Latin to modern French, uh, all the rules. And so we now have a data set uh, where we can like do these FSTs that we've shown and go from Latin to French. Um, and yeah, and the nice thing is that in addition to having the forward reconstruction that you get in Brian Mortensen's paper, we can also do backward reconstruction. And so, you know, we could use, uh, if we had the same for Latin to Spanish, Latin to Portuguese, et cetera, or, you know, when you have attestations, uh, if you find a manuscript that's in Middle French or Old French, you could start plugging in these data so that you shave uh, some of the possibilities in the reconstruction. Well, Latin to French, of course, we already know quite a lot about it. And I think uh, now it's time to go back to Chinese, or rather it's uh, the end of what I have to say, really. Uh, so now that we've proven that it's the system kind of works for any uh, sort of uh, language, not just Burmish, then we want to resubmit that paper. And then further than that, we want to start formalizing really this is uh, the steps from Old Chinese to uh, Middle Chinese as FSTs so that we can publish and then uh, other researchers can like come and contribute or argue the order but so that we can have a, uh, a collective conversation. So starting from uh, the base list we get in Baxter, uh, the revisions uh, that they've made in uh, 2014, uh, there are some books that are specific to the Han uh, that we've uh, collected data from. Um, and then we've there's material that we've started collecting and that we want to integrate in that system. It's not super easy to integrate because uh, how do you integrate rhyming data in a tree like this? Uh, so rhyming bronzes, uh, there's like transcription. So translation of Buddhist text into Chinese uh, contain a lot of Indic words for which we know the, the phonology. And so it tells us something about the Chinese phonology and recent excavation, etc. Uh, so that's where we're at. There's very work in progress and point in time. 